case is kind of a sad one um, and it's really weird because it's kind of close to home. I've actually lived in the same area where this happened before. So yeah, it's kind of weird and a little eerie to me. Forgive me if I seem a little off, I'm a little under the weather, I have the flu, which is another reason why this video is going up late. I do apologize. Today's episode is going to be on the unsolved disappearance of Rachel Mellon Skimp. On January 31st, 1996, 13-year-old Rachel Mellon Skimp decided to stay home from school because she wasn't feeling well. She complained that she had a sore throat and that she, you know, she was feeling kind of like she had a fever and she just really wasn't feeling well. Rachel was a really popular girl at school. She was said to be fun and funny and just a really loving person um, to be around in general. Rachel was not home alone that day. Her stepfather, Vince Millen, who was unemployed at the time, was also there. Around 11 a.m., Rachel called her paternal grandparents and she talked on the phone with them for about an hour. Around lunchtime, she played Nintendo with her stepfather, then decided to go take a nap because she wasn't feeling well. Around 2.30 p.m., her stepfather, Vince Millen, decided to take the family dog, Duke, out for a walk. He claims that while walking the dog, he slipped his collar chasing after a rabbit and he spent the next 20 to 30 minutes searching for Duke, couldn't find him and returned home. Once he returned home, he said he did not check on Rachel. Uh, he just assumed that she was asleep in her room. This all takes place in Brolinbrook, Illinois, and the reason why the location is such a huge deal is because of weather, okay? Um, if you guys are from the Chicagoland area, I am originally from Chicago, you know how freaking cold it can be outside. That day, it says that it was seven degrees, which is negative 13 Celsius. That is pretty dang cold, okay? So when Rachel's half-sister got home around 3.15 from school, she went to check on Rachel and did not find her in her room. Around five o'clock, Rachel's mother arrives home and Rachel's half-sister then tells her mother that Rachel decided to stay home from school that day, but isn't home. She isn't in her room and she's been missing and nowhere to be found. Around six o'clock, Rachel's mother called the Bolingbroke PD to report her missing daughter. Uh, however, if you guys know anything about filing a missing persons report, it has to be 24 hours before you can uh, even file a missing persons report, before they will even consider it missing. So uh, of course, Bolingbrook Police Department could do absolutely nothing. They told her that she should call friends, she should call family and neighbors and see maybe if Rachel was there or something like that. I think it is important to note in this case that Rachel was a previous runaway. She had run away last summer. So with that on her record, as well as it not being 24 hours, the cops really couldn't do anything. They had to wait that 24 hours. Rachel's mother, Amy, starts to call friends, family members, and neighbors trying to find out where the heck her daughter is, but she couldn't find her anywhere. No one had seen Rachel, no one had heard from her, no one had spoken to her. It was like she just disappeared. The next morning, February 1st, police began their search for Rachel, but she was nowhere to be found. The only thing missing from her room was a blue blanket and two pillows. Everything else was still in its place. Her shoes were still there. Her outerwear was still there. Her boots, her coat, her hat, her purse, her wallet, money, everything was still there in her room. So where the heck did Rachel go? While searching the home, police came across an entry in Rachel's diary that stated Vince Millen, Rachel's stepfather, who had been a father to her since she was a toddler, had kissed her and was touching her inappropriately. With this new bit of information from Rachel's diary entry, police made Vince Millen their number one suspect in the case. With no crime scene, no sign of Rachel, there was pretty much nothing police can do. This case has gone unsolved for so long because there's pretty much no evidence to point anywhere but to events 
Melon. A grand jury was convened, but no charges were brought against her parents. Vince, I know, took a lie detector test, which he failed certain parts of the exam. He has been interviewed countless times by the police, which he just continues to plead the fifth over and over again. The last thing that we've heard on this case, as far as everything goes, is that Vince was arrested in Tennessee for drunk driving in 2017. Amy Rachel's mom initially broke up with Vince, but they actually reunited and got back together, which I can't wrap my brain around but uh, that somehow happened. It is said that the family eventually moved from Chicago back to Tennessee. Um, they have cut off like their phones and all contacts and their Facebook, so you can't contact them at all. Jeff Skimp, Rachel's biological father, says that uh, he does not believe Rachel is still alive. He believes at this point that Rachel is, is dead but he would like to find her body so that he could finally put her to rest. This case is just, it's, it's mind boggling to me because somebody knows something. Somebody definitely knows something. All right guys, let's do this, let's go over the theories. Theory number one is that Rachel ran away. Um, this is a very probable theory just because she has run away before in the past. She ran away the previous year and she was having a lot of issues at home seeing that her stepfather was sexually abusing her. Then yes, I can see how she could probably want to run away. She had a history of doing that. It's more likely that she would repeat that because she did have a history of doing something like that. So I can understand that. The only thing that bothers me about this theory is that she took no coat, no boots. Most people that run away, they pack a bag, they pack a backpack, you know, they're planning that they're probably going to have to run the streets for a while. I don't see her walking out of the house in seven degree weather in the middle of January with no shoes and no coat. Like that just, that, no. That's where that theory of her being a runaway kind of kind of just doesn't sit well with me. It's just something not right about that. Theory number two is that uh, Vince Mellon actually murdered her and hid her body somewhere. When looking at the murder aspect, I definitely would say that this is high up there on the charts. Uh, Vince had motive. He was abusing her for quite some time and she had been writing it down in her diary so she had been logging what he was doing to her. I definitely think he is suspicious. Um, him pleading the fifth, he had a motive. They found her diary. Vince was the last one seen with her that day. He went missing for 20 minutes, he claims, walking the dog, which I think could have just been an alibi. So what do you guys think about this? Do you think that Vince uh, had something to do with the case? Or do you think that Rachel may have run away? Please leave a comment down below. As always, feel free to share these videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any future episodes and I will see you guys next Monday. Bye!